Donovan Mitchell scored 28, and 13 of those came in the fourth quarter. EHB. Gobert, 13 and 15. Been here before. Rubio, 22. Favors, 20 and 16. And they snap a 15 game losing streak in that building, winning 102 to 95. 20 to 9 in second chance points in favor of Utah, and they out rebounded them 56 to 46. Enough of me talking. Here's Dennis Scott. Game two is in the books. The Utah Jazz come into OKC and steal game two. The aggressive theme, yes. Derek Favors, 20 points and 16 rebounds, eight of them being offensive, and also keeping OK3 in check. Donovan Mitchell, zero free throws in the first half. Second half, more aggressive, eight of nine from the free throw line. Can they take this home and play the same way for game three? A uh, big thing like with, with Rudy, you know, he, he let me know, you know, I went 0 for 7 from 3. You know, I'm letting guys off the hook. You know, I got to keep applying pressure, getting to the rim. And even if I miss, you know, as you saw on the boards, they were right there uh, crashing and getting rebounds. But uh, just being aggressive, you know, getting to the rim, getting to the free throw line. I didn't have a free throw until the, the, the second half. So just continuing to be aggressive was just my mindset. Does it frustrate you when you see favors and go better, you know, kind of getting you guys in the glass the way they were throughout the game? I mean, it's... It, it, it's just frustrating. I mean, it's not because it's them too. It's just frustrating that they get another position, that they're still on offense. And that's the most frustrating part is that instead of shutting that position off for them, they get another attempt at it. It's, yeah, that's what's most, more frustrating. We've said the strength of our team is our team. And obviously we had some, some really good individual performances. I wouldn't call it a luxury as much as an identity. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think any one of those guys um, you know, they all need each other and they all know that. So if one, one guy's, you know, making plays, I think sometimes we see the guy that's scoring. And with our group, there's usually a couple people that have done something previously, you know, to generate an opportunity. Time for Hennessy never stop, never settle. Here's the, here are the numbers from that fourth quarter. 28 to 16, Utah outscores them, and the uh, the big three for OKC. Oh for, for 14. Oh for 14. I tell you what, though, I can listen to Stephen Adams talk all night long. Why is that? I mean, that was a great accent, wasn't it? Yeah, he he sounds like Jason Momoa, the actor, and he looks like him too. Okay, but the big three got to go. You can't go 0 for 14. <laughs> you can go hang out with him, man. I, I can't. I like his accent. <laughs> We're all looking for buttons. Well, y'all look for buttons. Oh, it's not really. <laughs> yeah, your speech is over. <laughs> That's the one we were looking for. Actually, I was looking for this one. You're killing me, Petey! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, Utah goes home now where they've won four in a row, 28 and 13 at home during the regular season for the next two against OKC. What's you thinking, Jet? Well, we, we, Donovan Mitchell is the real deal. Uh, you have to treat him not like a rookie. You have to treat him as the game plan on how to stop the Utah Jazz. Uh, he is the overall game plan because he, he creates so much offensive havoc that you have to get the ball out of his hands. Um, the one disadvantage for him, though, is it's some tremendous pressure on him, Ernie. Like, on the guys from OKC, there's one to go. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me make my point. He has to play well for the Jazz to win. None of those three guys from, from OKC have to play well. One or two of them have to play well for them to win. But Donovan Mitchell, he's uh, he's, uh, uh, he got a lot of pressure on him because he has to play great for the Jazz to be competitive. Look, looking at young guys like Donovan Mitchell and Jalen Brown, we know the look. They want it. So they don't even think about the pressure. They think about going out there making a name for himself, playing well. I agree with you, he does have to play well, but he's not looking at it like pressure. He's looking at it like we split, I'm going to the crib, I'm sleeping in my bed, I'm watching TV. And when I get to the crib on game three, it's going to be on and So crack. is Russell Westbrook. He's coming. He's coming, but they can't go, you know, between the big three, 0 for 14. No question. That's just, they got, they you got, got to step at up. some point, you, we can talk all the strategy we want to. You can't go 0 for 14 and expect to win an NBA playoff game. 102-95 the final. Game three, Saturday. Pressure. At Utah, all tied up at a game apiece. Back with more Inside the NBA, presented by Kia in just a second. Five years ago, um, 
you know, I was fortunate enough to go to to San Antonio and I, I had a chance to spend a lot of time with Pop, actually three days, and um, you know, couldn't have been any more gracious to me when I was in college and you know, welcomed me with open arms, took me to dinner, um, spent a lot of time with him, um, and then coming here to OKC. Um, and he's always reached out to me, and obviously I was really upset to hear about the passing of his wife, and you know, my, my thoughts and prayers are with him and his family, and um, I just wanted to say that before um, this started about the game, because um, I was really moved by it um, when I found the news out after the game was over with, um, and, and I really uh, feel bad for him and his family, and, and my prayers and thoughts are with them. You know, when you, when you play basketball, man, you, uh, you, know, you, I don't even know what to say, I mean, that's, Man, that's tough, man. Man. Uh, but this game is a beautiful game. It brings people together. It, you know, you build friendships over, you know, from playing the game. And you get so much support from so many people uh, that, you know, you would have never crossed path with, pass with if it wasn't for basketball. And just want Pop to know that the whole NBA family is supporting him. And, and you know, got his back through it all. It's, it's bigger than the game. It's bigger than winning and losing. It's about the brotherhood that we've built as NBA players, everybody in the NBA family. And I know we talked about this earlier tonight, but uh, let's just, you know, one more time. We can go around the table here, Shaq, and we'll start with you on, uh, on what Pop is going through now. Man, I'm, I'm sure he's feeling it right now. My thoughts and prayers go out to Pop. Uh, great guy, does a lot on and off the court, military man, I have a lot of respect for him. Uh, he was in San Antonio when I was in high school and my father informed me that he gave me a, a pair of shoes when I disrespected Pop one day and my father told me, don't ever disrespect a military man again. And he's just always been nice and gracious and courteous and I can't imagine what he's going through. You know, I married his lovely wife for 40 years and. She's not with us anymore. So, you know, my thoughts and prayers go out to Pop Spurs organization, uh, his uh, grandchildren, his kids. I'm sure he's feeling it right now. Yeah, again, you know, the thoughts and prayers goes out to the Popovich family. Uh, he has created a culture of basketball that everyone emulates. So we would, we would only imagine that that culture was created by how he does it in his household. And very rarely do people act differently outside, inside their home than they do outside. So I'm sure that the appreciation that his wife had for him and he had for his wife, and she was probably big in turn teaching him the culture of how to, how to, how to raise men in the NBA. Uh, he's been an activist. He's been all of those things. So uh, in terms of uh, in the forefront of basketball, which we understand that there had to be some great woman beside him to help him articulate that, uh, feel that, and nourish that, and relay that to the players that he coaches today. You know, once you part of a sports family, you get to know, I mean, you don't know everybody on like, uh, spend a lot of quality time with them, but you get to know them. And every time I've been around Coach Popovich as a player, as a commentator, uh, he's just been unbelievable. Everybody, I'm not talking about just the coaching. Everybody know the Spurs are the best organization in the NBA. But I'm talking about as a person. And the tough, the stuff he talked about politically, I admired and respected. Uh, and this is just, you know, all you can do is say, give me your thoughts and prayers. Uh, I, I never know how another person feels. I hate when people say, I know how you feel, because every, every situation, every relationship is different. And I just want to wish him, his family, uh, it, it's, it's too, I don't know how old the grandkids are, but just the entire community of San Antonio because, man, they have the best fan base, uh, in my opinion. They have the best fan base in the NBA. I'm just, you know, go ahead. You know, because that's all they got. Yeah. And when you go to San Antonio, you see they love the Spurs. So that whole city is probably hurt, and I just want to wish the whole city of San Antonio the best. I, uh, I think about what... I just heard from uh, Kevin Harlan and Reggie Miller as they were uh, closing out their telecast and they talked about sitting down with Pop to talk about the game 
but before that he can only open up his phone and show him a picture of uh, one of their one of his grandkids mm -hmm. and being the only grandfather on the set here look I can relate and you know for like for me and Cheryl that's a, one of the joys of our lives is is enjoying these grandchildren and watching them grow up and watching your kids be parents and um, and now I think about Pop and I think about him going solo down that road now and that's tough and that's tough so we're we're praying for you Pop yes, and indeed. praying for the entire family for comfort and peace in a really tough time we'll be back Okay. Yeah, that's fine, yes. Had to be quite a scare, though, when you get... Yeah, um, I saw the replay, too. It didn't look good. Um, you know, I heard pretty, pretty bad. Um, initially, I told Ty afterward that I uh, uh, could have gone back in, but I think he liked the, uh, the flow out there and guys made big plays down the stretch. So, um, you know, it's not going to feel great tomorrow, but throw some ice on it, tape it up, and be ready to go. Did you get, a, did you get an x-ray or anything, Kevin? X-ray, came back negative. Anything else? Yeah, you had, um, I think you were 5-15 tonight, um, and you're doing other things, but what is it, at least for two games, about just finding your shot? Uh, well, you know, I think in game one, every shot was away from the basket. I didn't even touch the paint, so um, I feel like tonight I did a better job of that. Had a few go in and out. Um, you know, but a few others, um, you know, go my way and I, it's a whole different game for me. So, uh, you know, I expect that to be different, uh, heading forward. To that point, you're in the paint a lot more tonight. How, how much does that new starting lineup kind of open things up for you personally? Uh, definitely with Kyle out there looking to, uh, you know, get me open and, and vice versa. Um, Braun playing downhill and you know, he really set the tone tonight. So, um, I think it, uh, I think it only helps us. Those pin downs Kyle was doing for you, was that just kind of game flow or was that something you guys were working on together? Yeah, just game flow. And, you know, Kyle's a really smart player, so he, uh, you know, he looks for that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, that's a uh, playing transition. You just try to go and run and find his man. And if they're overplaying him, just, uh, you know, he'll go and set a screen for you and you just got to knock it down. So, just to be clear, Kevin, I'm sorry, do you expect to play in game three? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. Anything else? Just with the um, with this lineup, um, you know, you've you've been to all these finals with Jr. You spent you know almost two years now with Kyle. Is there something about uh, a familiarity with the guys in this lineup versus any other lineup that you can play, and how that that may help, especially early in the playoffs? Yeah, I think it, more than anything, just starting the game, uh, just being familiar with one another. I think that that definitely helps. Um, and then just bringing the other guys along. I think, uh, you know, just having different guys come off the bench and uh, bring a lot of energy for us is, is uh, going to prove to be big for us moving forward. Um, but I think initially just getting that, uh, especially after game one, getting that, that uh, a better start uh, was big for us. Are we anxious for you to get out there and get it Yeah, I would, Ty texted me after the game, said he was thinking about it. Um, after game one, and just asked how my foot was doing, and if I, if I thought I'd be able to go, and I told him I'd be ready if he wanted me to. So uh, I've kind of been preparing for it for a couple of days, and, um, and I said it yesterday, but I was just ready to just go out there and play hard. I feel like it's been a while since I've been able to really compete, and uh, and uh, you know, it was a great atmosphere tonight. It was a game that we needed to win, and uh, I thought, you know, guys, it wasn't pretty the whole time, um, but we did what we had to do. We got some stops when we needed them. Um, and obviously, the problem is amazing. Talk about uh, the defensive plays you made, diving on the floor, breaking up passes, and and that seemed to really spark everybody. Yeah, I think that's uh, um, every moment is big in the playoffs. Moments can change games. Moments can you know uh, create a uh, a run, and uh, so I think you know that's, that's that's on all of our minds. You know, if there's a loose ball, a dive on the floor, if you can take a charge, do that. Um, the playoffs are all about scrapping and uh, whatever it takes, right? Whatever it takes. So, um, but it was, like I said, it was just fun to be out there competing again tonight. How are you feeling? Your illness and your foot and everything. I feel good. I feel good. I feel good. Um, 
a little tired. And we'll go home and fill our cup and be ready to go again in a couple of days. This might be a dumb question, but when, when he has a start like that, um, is does he suddenly become the first option on every play down court? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, it, He's the first option usually, and he's, you know, all the time. But uh, I think when he comes out with that type of mentality, he just sets the tone. Um, uh, you know, he lets them know that he's here to play. It, I think it gives us all confidence. Um, you know, I thought that was uh, it was really important for him to come out and do that tonight. And um, like I said, just, he really just set the tone for the whole game. Kyle, how different is it when sometimes he'll come out and get you all going? And then, like a night like tonight, when he's yeah, no, I think that's that's uh, he's just trying to feel the game, mm -hmm. um, you know. And I think um, he needs to do both. Mm -hmm. This whole thing is we, we roll how 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 he rolls, um, you know. So um, just, there's there's moments when he has to you know try to get us all going or get us uh, get us a shot, but. Yeah, a lot of it, a lot of our shots are predicated off him, you know, you know putting his head down, driving to the basket, and kind of creating things for us. That's just how that's how we play. You know, we don't run a motion offense or anything like that. We just we give Ron the ball and say go to work. Um, and uh, you know, tonight, uh, he was really special. I don't know if anyone mentioned this to you yet, but Jr. said, you know, really, you deserve the credit for Ron start because you caused so much defensive attention. Oh, sweet. You don't need to say <laughs> all that. Nah. He doesn't, he doesn't need to say anything to me. Um, you know, I think I think switch out there too. You know, just I think you know putting as much shooting as we can around Braun is always a is always a good thing for us, and uh, it creates other you know things that we got to work through um, as well. But I think uh, you know tonight it was, it was important for us to have a really good start. I think uh, after the after game one we all saw what happened, what happened, and just our energy wasn't there. And so I thought that you know the, the thought tonight was to you know, put a lot of shooting around him. And, I would let him be really aggressive um, and kind of get us all going. Kyle, we've talked a lot this year about this team's identity and trying to find it with all the changes, all the different lineups. When you guys play the all-shooters lineup, does that feel more like you guys? Um, if we're making shots, it feels like us. I think you think uh, you know the way the way we've always been best is when you know Braun. You know, when he has space to attack the basket and, and just, you know, wreak havoc. You know, whether he's attacking the basket to score for himself or kicking it out to shooters. Um, that's that's the team that I played against, you know, before I got here. And that's the team that I've been a part of the last season and a half. And, uh, you know, puts people in a lot of a lot of binds. Um, there's a lot of decisions you have to make. You know, are you going to double team him or you going to stand with shooters? Um, so I think that's, it feels like when we're playing our best basketball, usually there's some kind of lineup like that. But there's moments for everything. Jason Lloyd, The Athletic. I know you say all the time every game presents its own challenges, but, you know, Ty was talking for the last couple of days. He wanted you to be more assertive and aggressive early on. So when, when do you know that you've got it rolling early and, and you can take over a game the first six minutes like you did tonight? <clears throat> um, you know, it was just a feel. I mean, Coach Lou called up the first play for me and, and went down. So we uh, went back to it. You know, I was able to hit another one and, I just felt like I was in a really good rhythm, so I just try to try to see how long I could stay in this zone and just um, you know, try to make a, a mark on the game early on, especially after the way we started at game one. You got so many guys who have never been to the spot before. Is there any part of you, you always say game one's a feel-out game. Was there any part of you that just kind of sat back the other night and wanted to see how they responded to the moment and reacted to the moment? Well, I mean, um, it's part of me, obviously, yeah. I mean, you, it was first, you know, first uh, experience for a lot of our guys in game one, and for me, like I said, it's always a fill-out game to see how teams are playing me, playing our team, and um, seeing the ways I can be better, you know, and uh, kind of broke down the film uh, the last couple of days, uh, seeing ways I can try to be better for our team. So, um, you know, definitely, you know, in game one, I was, the, you know, more of the mind, you know, working um, than anything. Dave McBenham in ESPN. It almost wouldn't be Cavs-like if you didn't have a lineup change considering you had 29 different ones in the regular season. But how, how do you feel like uh, the presence of Kyle and JR from the start opened up your game and just overall helped the team? Well, I mean, I think it's just familiarity, you know, with that lineup, you know, to start tonight. I mean, um, you know, you got four guys um, that's played in postseason games before, uh, you know, and then you had G. Hill who's got his own experience as well. So, you know, that definitely helps from, from, from that standpoint. Um, you know, it allowed, um, 
you know, JG and and and, and Rodney to kind of get in, get settled into the game before their number was called. So, you know, I think it worked well for us tonight. Chris Fedor, Cleveland.com. LeBron, we've talked a lot this year about the Cavs' identity and how much it it has changed because of so many different lineups and so many different rosters that you've had, basically. Um, When you play you with the four shooters, does it feel more like Cavaliers basketball to you? No, I mean, for me, um, you know, I just try to be as productive as I can no matter what lineup is out there. Um, You know, to start the game, you can obviously with the space – you know, with uh, Jr. And, and Kyle's ability to shoot the ball, and obviously Kev, um, you know, it creates a lot more space. Um, you know, but for me, I just try to be productive, no matter what line is on the floor, and it, and it felt good for us to get off to a good start. Scott Sergeant WFNY, Brian. A lot of talk is going to be about it with the offensive side of the new starting five. What can you say that those guys have done or did, at least on the stretch, defensively as well? Um, I mean. Listen, Jr. and Cal were huge, you know, late game. You know, um, Jr. being able to pick up Ola Depot on that full court pressure, get the steal, get the layup. Um, you know, Cal getting switched off onto to Thaddeus one possession. You know, could have went either way with the with the push off or or a block, and then he comes right back and uh, has a one on one matchup with uh, Miles Turner and be able to get the strip late into the game, late in the game. Um, you know, they were huge defensively. Um, you know, so and we definitely needed that from them. Tom with his AP. Uh, Bron, Victor somehow got open for that last three. Went, went through your mind when he had that open look from the right wing? Uh, that we blew a coverage. Um, that was the thought that went to my head. Uh, we blew a coverage, and um, uh, we were lucky. And uh, you know, I'd much rather be um, you know, on time, on target, than to be lucky. Um, but he missed it, and we was able to get the rebound. Overall, what do you think of the defensive effort by you guys? Um, I think, at, at, you know, we were better than game one. And, um, you know, we, we, we had some laws, obviously, once again. But I think we were uh, in tune. We were more physical at the point of attack. And, um, you know, and it definitely helped us out a lot. LeBron, Jason Spells, WTHR in Indianapolis. Given the fact you all came out so strong, so powerful, 18-point lead, what does that tell you about the Pacers, their resiliency to come back and make this a game late? Um, that they're resilient. A lot of teams struggle right, when teams get that big lead in this on the road in a difficult environment. Were you surprised they were able to come back? No, I don't think any of these 16 teams that's in the postseason, eight in the East, eight in the West, are that's, that's, that's going to struggle. You know, if they get down, I think we're all here for a reason. We all punched our ticket for a reason, and Indiana is one of those teams as well. Jeff Shadell, News Herald. So, LeBron, how do you think this uh, sets things up for game three? What do you mean? Well, I mean, the way you guys played tonight and the way they won uh, game one, how does this, what do you think this means for? Uh, the, the next game? Uh, it means the series is tied 1 1 and it's going to Indiana. So, you know, we got to be ready to play. Um, they got a great crowd and uh, they're a really, really good team. So, I mean, it just sets up for game three. It's just the next game. LeBron, PJ Ziegler, Fox 8. Um, I, I know you said coming into this game that uh, you wanted to be more assertive. Did you think it was going to take a 46 point effort to? Uh, Lead your team to victory? Um, I didn't come into the game saying I want to be assertive. Coach Lou said it. Um, I never said I said I'm going to play my game. And uh, and I did that tonight. And I was I made some shots early, got into a rhythm. Um, you know, defensively I wanted to be in tune. I wanted to try to get my guys involved as well. But I mean I, I don't I just don't I don't come in the game saying I'm gonna try to do this, I'm gonna do that. It just kinda happens to flow of the game. I play the game the right way and that's just the result of it. So, you know, um, you know, we got you know some work to do uh, tomorrow. We're gonna watch the film, break it down, and see ways we can be better in Indiana, where we know it's gonna be a, a very hostile environment come Friday. Now I want to start out first. I just want to say um, condolences to the Popovich family. Um, just got news about his wife. You know, very sorry to hear that. Um, the Popovich family they're in our prayers, and um, anything we can do, as far as the Cavs organization, we're willing to help. So. Um, thoughts and prayers go out to Popovich and his family. 
Joe Varden, Cleveland.com. Is there an update on Kevin? He's good. Okay. What, what, okay. Did he, is he getting an x-ray? No, he's good. He just a little jammed them, a little whatever, but he's fine. Okay. Then uh, how come he didn't come back in? Because we had a good flow going. Okay. So he's he's okay he's for great. game two? Yes, sir. Ready to go. Game three. Game three. Yes, sir. Dave and Grenham and ESPN. Ty, you said you wanted to see a more of an aggressive approach from LeBron James. Obviously, you got it. Um, how much of was that him taking over? And how much was that you um, adding some shooters to give him more spacing to deal with? A little bit of both. You know, I think he did a great job just being aggressive, you know, attacking the basket early, setting tone, you know, for our team. And um, defensively, I thought we were good again tonight, only giving up six threes. And, you know, when you're blitzing and you're scrambling around, you're going to give some points in the paint with the bigs. But we'll take those twos over the threes. And, you know, two games in a row, they haven't scored 100 points. So, um, but LeBron definitely did a great job just setting the tone early offensively. And um, they got our defense going as well. Scott Sargent, WFNY coach, you you clearly altered the, the starting lineup a little bit and you got a lot out of LeBron, but did you get everything you wanted to see out of the other four guys as well? I did. I thought JR was great defensively on Oladipo. I thought he really challenged him up the floor, picking him up full court, being physical with him, denying him the basketball, and at the end of the game having a big steal, you know, that uh, went down and laid the basketball up. So um, JR's defensive aggression was really good for us to start that game. And I don't want to presume, but you're sticking with this going forward? Yes, sir. Jason Lord, the Athletic. You mentioned it, the defense holding them under 102 in a row. What do you like best about the way you guys are defending right now? Um, I thought this, tonight, I thought we were, um, it was clearly we were more physical to start the game. I thought we got up and pressured their guards. I thought um, we really denied their bigs, you know, easy catches. I thought um, JR did a good job of denying Oladipo, G Hill getting in the backcourt. So um, I liked our aggressiveness as far as just being physical, being on the bodies, and, and being aggressive as far as picking the ball full court and also being in the passing lanes with the bigs. I think you mentioned, I was tweeting, I think you mentioned something earlier about you give up twos for threes. They, they got a ton of paint points. Is that just pick your poison? You'd rather them scoring inside than at the three point line, or are you concerned at all that you're giving up? You know, sixty some points. I mean, you gotta give up something, and when you, you know, got a guy like Oladipo who has it going and um, can get to where he wants to get to any time. You know, we want to try to take him out of the game. And I thought the third quarter, um, he got aggressive. You know, um, attacking the basket, attacking the blitz. But you know, overall, you know, if they're only making six threes, they can't get to a hundred. You know, we got to be able to at least score a hundred points. You know, going forward. So um, you got to give up something, like we talked about, but. You know, two games in a row under 100 points for them is, is pretty good for us. Last one real quick for me. Anything – do you need to see more out of Rodney and, and I need Clarkson? to see more out of a lot of guys. Yeah. Ty, getting back to your lineup change, what inspired the idea to throw two start or two shooting guards uh, well, in there? I think the talking to some of you guys throughout the course of the season, I told you I wanted to start Corver in the playoffs. You guys knew that. Um, but, you know – with the passing of his brother and then missing the last couple, two or three games with his foot and then being sick, you know, he just wasn't, I didn't ain't think he had a rhythm. And he said he didn't think he had a rhythm either. But, um, you know, talking to him when he missed practice the other day, I said, well, you know, I want to start you like the same plan. He said, I'll be ready to go. And I said, you sure? He said, yes, I'll be ready to go. So um, by putting him in a starting lineup, you know, we had, in, you know, also insert, insert JR because I'm comfortable with JR. I've been there before with JR. Um, I know what JR brings, and then he can guard Oladipo as well. So um, that was that was the reasoning. Ron Ty, Ron Ty, Ron Potest of the Sports Animal 1390. Uh, talk about Kyle Korver's performance. He had a lot of clutch threes in the first half. You know, Kyle was great for us. I think opened the floor up, um, but more so than anything, I thought defensively. I mean, he had a few good rotations. He did a great job on on Thad when we, you know, was in full rotation, taking the bigger guys, um, boxing out. So um, he does all the little things it takes to win. And when you want to win a championship, you know, you got to do all the little things. And um, outside of his great shooting, um, just doing the little things and um, making the extra efforts, you know, being in the right place defensively, taking two charges tonight, um, really set the tone for us. I thought. Um, in that first half of taking two charges, I think, on Oladipo um, was big for us. So Kevin, Bron, you know, Kyle, they all took charges. Ty Hayden Grove, Cleveland.com. Um, JR, you mentioned his defense. It looked like he was ex exerting a lot of energy out there. Is that something he can keep up for, you know, the rest of the series if he has to go against Oladipo? I mean, he has been coming off the bench. 
Um, is this conditioning there to be able to put forth that effort uh, throughout the rest of the series? Yeah, I think so. I think JR does a great job of priding himself of being in shape, you know, doing all the extra work to be in shape. And, um, you know, we played him a lot of minutes in that first half, but he just played so well. And then I try to give him more of a, a break going into that fourth quarter, bringing back the last six where he can just, you know, go all out. So he was able to pick up all the depot full court, um, get that big steal for us. And, um, you know, it was huge. Hi, Spencer Davies, Basketball Insiders. Uh, just curious, in that second quarter to begin, it, it seemed like uh, LeBron and Love were sitting for a little bit. Uh, have you made it a point to, to play at least one of them on the court at, at all times? With those yes, guys? I have, but just the foul trouble has been different. And then, okay. you know, Kevin getting tired at different times of the game because we asked him to do a lot. You know, he's blitzing all the deep holes and sprinting back. So um, just all that matters about, you know, how, how fatigued he gets. So um, you, I got him back in early to try to, you know, go to him in the post, especially in that fourth quarter, or bringing him back for LeBron and posting Kevin a lot in that fourth quarter. And then getting back to JR, it, it just seems when, when he's engaged that he just brings so much energy. Uh, a couple of those plays, those hustle plays, going back and stripping, you know, Old Depot uh, up in full court, and then the one in the first quarter. Just what does it mean to your team when he has that kind of energy? It means a lot. Just showing the fight, showing the toughness that we need, um, bringing the physicality, and um, he's not scared to hit people. You know, you got to hit people in this league. It's not a, <laughs> it's a contact sport. You know, and guys have to understand and realize that. NBA.com. Before and after game one, there was a lot of talk about some of your new guys and how they would respond or had responded or not to this level of play. As the series goes on, do you, you know, what do you expect to see from them as they get one more game under their belt? Game I after think they'll game? get more and more comfortable. Um, but like I said before, just having LeBron and Caleb set the tone early, I think, would open it up for a lot of those guys. But um, they see what it takes. You know, if you want to be champions, if you want to, you know, go back to the NBA finals, you know, teams are going to come after us. And we've had a lot of first round tough matchups, you know, the, all, the whole four years I've been here. So it hasn't been easy. And they have to understand that. And we just got to be ready to get into the fight. I think LeBron either took your first seven shots, maybe. I know he made your first six. Um, did you have some kind of edict? Like, he gets to shoot until X. It, just, it seemed like no matter what, <laughs> he was shooting for at least the first five, six minutes. Well, we just, you know, wanted him to set the tone. And he did that tonight um, by getting to the basket early, you know, making a couple jump shots. But um, we ran the same first play until they stopped it. Then he kept getting what he wanted. And... Um, you know, he wanted to set the tone early, you know, and he did that. And uh, we just kind of followed his lead from there. So, um, well, we got to be better going to the Indiana games three or four. Larry, you guys talked about setting a physical tone from the get-go. Do you think you accomplished that early on? Uh, yeah, we definitely, uh, I should say Braun definitely did that. <laughs> but, I mean, I think the others followed suit, don't uh, you think? No, absolutely. That was more so just, uh, you know, a nod to how incredible he was the first couple, you know, first couple minutes all night, really. Larry, how nervous was the team when you saw uh, Love go to the bench with what looked like a hand injury? Uh, it was definitely, uh, you know, something you hate to see for either side. But you know, uh, you know, when it's when it's a guy like Kev that affects the team so much, and uh, um, you know, such a, you know, such a key part of this team is, it was, it was uh, you know, a little nervous sweats there for a little bit. Your thoughts on LeBron's start? Uh, not that the guy surprises us, but that was an incredible start. It's, I mean. Like, like you said, it's hard to be surprised anymore, but like ridiculous, wasn't it? It's it's uh ridiculous. Just awesome. What was it the first sixteen, thirteen? First thirteen like in the game. Sixteen for you guys. <laughs> awesome. Defensively, do you feel you guys uh, made some strides? Absolutely. Um, you know, what do we hold them to? Ninety four? Ninety Ninety seven. Other than well, ninety four, then the last second heave will chalk it up to 94 but um no i thought i thought we were really good you know uh you know we kind of figured out our um <clears throat> you know our, our coverage on oladipo and i'm sure there's going to be some changes going into game three um but you know i thought uh you know the whole team did a good job Larry, they still come out with a split and of course the rally twice at least tonight from double digits i mean they're making this looking like a long series i mean they're a very good team you know that that's that's not anything that's going to shock us or shouldn't shock anybody else. You know they're a very good team, and uh, you know we just um, you know we got to do what we did tonight, and you know take their punch and throw ours back. You know, being the first time in the playoffs, now that you have two in your belt, does it does it seem like it's just basketball now? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it, it, it just feels like, uh, almost like basketball on steroids like it's crazy you know, the, the energy in the arena is 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 awesome you know and that's that's a huge you know a huge thank you to our fans you know that showed up tonight and and, and uh sunday so um you know i'm excited to go to indy and, and see what it's like on the other side of things what do you take away from this series for the rest of it uh what do, you, what do you take away from this game for the rest of the series moving forward um you know it's uh, just like just like he said it's not gonna be an easy series you know they're gonna they're gonna have their runs we're gonna have ours we just have to uh make sure we can make sure we can maintain and outlast them